Brought to you by Matt with Sir Lester. There are three questions for this video and you are to answer them in 15 seconds each. Are you ready? In three, two, one. Let's consider this function. First question, what is the vertex of the graph of the given function? The answer is at 2 and 8. Question number 2. The concavity or the opening of the graph opens in which direction? The graph opens downward. Last question. What is the maximum and the minimum values of the given function? The answers are, for the maximum, it's 8, and for the minimum, it's negative, infinity. Did you get 3 over 3? If not, please continue viewing this video. The answers earlier, our vertex is at 2 and 8, the concavity opens downward, and our maximum and minimum values are 8 and negative infinity respectively. We can actually connect all these three concepts and answers by just the discussion including the coefficients of this function. So we have this function here structured similarly with quadratic equation. And we can give here the correct coefficients. We know that the coefficient a is the coefficient of your x squared. So we have here negative 2 as the numerical coefficient of x squared. Our b is the coefficient of your x. In this case, we have 8. And our constant, since we don't have the constant here, we can just simply say 0. With these coefficients, we can determine the vertex without a lot of processes and difficult uh, solutions. And we could also determine the concavity with one of the three coefficients here. Once we know the vertex and the uh, concavity, we can draw an analysis on the values for the maximum and the minimum values of the given function. By the way, the, the first one is the vertex. The vertex is called as the inflection point or the point of inflection of our graph. Our graph, by the way, is a parabolic graph since this is a quadratic function. The parabolic graph has a change in direction. It's either from decreasing to increasing portion or the other way around. And that vertex is the point in the Cartesian plane where the graph should change its direction. So since vertex is a point, it's a combination of x and y co uh, coordinates. The formula could be here. For our x coordinate, it's negative b over 2a using the a and b coefficients identified earlier. And for our y coordinate, it's actually 4ac minus b squared over 4a. Now, you don't need to worry much with memorizing this portion here because just like any other points in the Cartesian plane, once you have the value for your x coordinate, simply substitute that in your given equation and you will get its paired y coordinate. In this case, negative b over 2a is your x coordinate. Again, once we solve this, simply substitute in our original function to solve for this without even using this formula. But I'm just presenting this for, as, uh, you could use it as part of your review. So let's start with the vertex. So you have here the x coordinate, negative b over 
to a. Our b is 8, so that's negative of 8 over um, 2 times negative 2, which is our a. So this would mean that x is negative 8 over 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, which will give us a result for x, which is 2. This is the x coordinate of our vertex. And we will be using this and substituting this on our function. Our original function is f of x is equal to negative 2x squared plus 8x. If we have f of 2, meaning we change the value for x to 2, we will get now the y coordinate. So you have negative 2, x is 2, but don't forget the exponent plus 8 times 2. So you have here 2 squared is 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 plus 16. So our f of 2, which ac actually stands for the y coordinate of our vertex, this gives us a result of positive 8. So in a sense, the vertex is at a point 2 Sorry, this should be parenthesis. So 2 and positive 8. This should be the point in our Cartesian plane. So let's have here the Cartesian plane, uh, just like this, where our um, graph changes its direction. So if we have 2, 1, 2, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Sorry, it may not be scaled properly, but we have it here, 8. Okay, so this is our point of uh, inflection, the graph. So our graph is a parabola, so it could only have two directions. Let's say this is its first direction. It opens downward and the vertex is here. So let us try to use this one. If this is our vertex, this would be our graph opening downward, right? It opens downward or it faces downward. Or if it's opening upward, let's say another point here, this should be our point of inflection. This is where as uh, the value of our y or f of x goes down. Once it reaches this point here, which is considered our vertex, it goes up. So that's the point of inflection. Or the other way around, if this is our point and it opens downward, so from here to there, from left to right, it goes up. Once it reaches that point, it changes its direction, it goes down. So it could only be upward or downward. And that decision making could be determined by this value here, our A coefficient. We don't need other values and other computation. Simply look at our A coefficient. Here's the catch. If the value for A is greater than zero, in short, it is positive, we are 100% sure that our graph should open upward with a vertex here, of course. But if it's a less than zero or a negative number, so it should open downward with the vertex here. Just for the purpose of discussion, we don't have this value. Our a should not be equal to zero because if a is equal to zero, there would be no x squared coefficient and hence the function is no longer quadratic. The graph should not be parabola. So it is only a linear function and the graph is a line. So it could never be like that. So it's just either opening downward or upward. Now, it fits this criteria here because our a is negative 2 and this opens, uh, this is negative uh, value. Our a is a negative integer. So it should open downward. So our graph should look like this. By the way, do not be too stressed. This is just a representative graph as my points and my graph may not be accurately um, drawn. This is because when you have a quadratic function, your graph is a parabola and you need at least five points where the vertex is at the middle so that you could see the movement of our values. But since we are just looking for concavity, we have identified that again, using the value of your a coefficient, it opens 
down one. So, we are no longer going to solve for the other points as we are just looking for the vertex and the concavity. And at the same time, the last concerns the maximum and the minimum values. Once we know the vertex and the concavity, this is just easy. It's because like this. The opening of concavity, let's say in this case downward, already determines as which of the two is or has an exact value. And it's the maximum. It's because, of course, we know this to be y-axis. This is also known as f of x, right? Our minimum and maximum value covers the y or the f of x axis. And you could see it from here. Okay. From left to right, okay, don't worry about the arrowhead. From left to right, we see that it increases its value. So it goes up, it goes up there. But once it reaches the point of our vertex, it goes down. The graph changes its direction. And this changing of direction, even including here, it doesn't end. It even extends further as we have other values for x that we could also substitute on our function and it will still go downward like that. My point is this, when you look at the y-axis, this vertex of ours is actually the highest point at, as it doesn't our graph did not even reach other points here on the y-axis, meaning the maximum value is already set. It's the minimum that is also not exact but also set, but not just exact value. The maximum value is the vertex and which of the two? Again, the maximum and minimum covers y or f of x. So this y coordinate of your vertex without even solving the rest of the concerns is your maximum value that is again your maximum value because your graph opens downward if in case the graph opens upward so this is not maximum it should be the minimum okay this is why these three are linked into this video the vertex the concavity and these two values here because the y coordinate of our vertex with this x coordinate used earlier and the concavity already tells us which of the two is exact and that's actually maximum. Now, let's go to the minimum. The minimum is not exact but it's already given in the graph. As mentioned, this extends further down. As we use other values of x, it will still go down. This would mean the minimum value for f of x or the y value extends further down towards negative infinity not just infinity but more specifically negative infinity these are again identified by the idea of concavity and the vertex and these are all made easier by your a b and c coefficients and no other computations are needed these are the discussions for this subscribe now